So this is my few minutes today for pace, um, and I read a post the other day on a friend's board that said, um, stop making speeches and do something to change the law. Well, I'm pretty sure it was for me, and um, I haven't done anything to change the law, obviously, but I have written um, a legal profile to the world's highest court based on the law that I'm very familiar with, that I usually argue to stop industrial destruction. Um, that brings about um, human human devastation, um, and I have applied that to to the context of this war uh, because I believe that this court should be acting to intervene, and it has the power to do so. But this will only happen if they are willing to end the impunity of those leaders who are perpetrators of this heinous crime, which is the Syrian war, which has led to uh, some four hundred thousand deaths. And, uh, and millions of people who have had their lives destroyed and homes destroyed and have turned into refugees with no state of dignity and no place to go and often. So um, will the court take action is the question now. I'm lobbying it at the highest level of international power, asking for support. I'm asking for support from people who are obviously aligned with some of these nation states who whose leaders are committing the crime, obviously, for an alliance of, of business and um, defence and industrialist uh, companies and contacts in their nation. Uh, they are the proxy leaders. I like to call them the poly, polys, the politicians. But, um, you know, unless some people, unless we can find people within these countries um, and these networks of power who are willing to stand for peace and for the lives of children, um, then I feel that the world has, has no hope because, as I said yesterday, um, I get the feeling that Lebanon is next. I think that they're taking one country after the other in Syria. I think they have an agenda to um, to completely take over the Middle East um, and create a union territory like the European Union, but through military force. Um, they've done a lot of countries so far. This means a devastating future war with Iran, which we know on, um, on a number of occasions they've tried to start. Um, Lebanon is probably next, and... Um, and it's just so transparently obvious. And unless these leaders of violence are removed from power, uh, then we have no chance of peace. And the terror attacks which provoke their right to then use military force to continue these wars by rallying the, the fear or the hate um, or the confusion of the local people because their local people have been attacked, one or two people or 100 people have died, so that our governments go off and murder 400,000 people across the other side of the world. I mean, there's no relativity here, um, and there should be no distinction between whose lives are of value. And um, so for me, I really hope that the court um, look at my, um, my argument seriously, um, that they investigate and that they summons these leaders or arrest these leaders, which they have the right to do at the outset, um, to appear before them, and that the nation states replace these leaders. These leaders have clearly been inflicting mass murder, mass violence, and mass terror, which has started to spread right across the world and destroy quality of life for people everywhere and create a racial and religious tension in, in nations all over the world that will take years to undo the damage of. You know, I mean, neighbors becoming in conflict just because of, of their country of origin or their or their spiritual beliefs. Um, and that's what these leaders are creating. I mean, at every level of society, they are shattering the very fabric of society whilst we stand by uh, kind of helpless to do anything about it, unwilling to do anything about it, making speeches, according to my friend. Um, but I mean, in this case, I have uh, used my knowledge of this law in this court to, uh, to put a submission forward. They will now have to make a decision on that submission. So I'm asking, I guess, for, um, for anyone that I know um, who is uh, familiar with any of the areas relevant to the Syrian war um, to, to approach me and start working with me on a second submission of greater detail. Um, and um, if you can financially support so that a team can be hired, that's also great. Um, but this for me is kind of like a, a love for life mission and in honor of the Syrian children who um, whose murders need to stop. And that stops when our allied forces or our coalition governments who are trying the grand theft of the nation state of Syria withdraw from these walls and admit defeat and um, accept that we don't want a future of violence that requires the raping and pillaging of other countries and the grand theft of other countries 
We want self-sustainable, self-sufficient economies that use uh, new technologies um, that don't therefore require us to go and rape and pillage and steal the resources of other nations. That is a future worth fighting for. That is what we need leaders who promote and um, enable. And, uh, you know, the Theresa May snap election to, to get out that the woman who said she would use atomic bombs on innocent people and who is investing $205 billion instead of helping her citizens uh, gain quality of life in uh, creating weapons that will murder millions of people in the future or be used as a political tool of communication. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't have to have irrational, violent leaders. We can have leaders in the future who don't need to bully each other with the, with the rhetoric of nuclear warfare because at some stage there'll be someone crazy enough to push that button. Theresa May has already said she is uh, crazy enough to push that button. So I still think that she should be removed from leadership and the UK should have a snap election. We can't support leaders of violence. They are not the way to a world of peace. That's my message for today. Cheers.